So I just marked my 44th rotation around the sun. And, um, and now I've gained another year's experience. I thought I'd have a look back and think about it. And if that interests you in any way, stay tuned. Hi guys, it's me and happy birthday to me. Even though my birthday was actually quite uh, about a week ago. Anyway, um, yeah, it's weird. I am 45 years old. It's amazing. 45 years. 45 is that weird cusp between not young and not old. It's, um, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying being in my 40s a lot. Uh, and I thought I would take a moment to record a video and just look back on the previous year. I wanted to do this when the new year hit, but I didn't. And I wanted to do it on my birthday and I didn't, but I've got the opportunity now. You know what, I made one of these pretty much every year, but I don't often make them public because I, I try and make them more for myself than for other people's consumption. Um, but I think it's a good habit to get into because life is a journey and it's interesting to just stop for a second and listen to yourself and see where you are in life's journey. And going back, you know, there are times when I made videos where I know I was probably in a different headspace to how I sounded when I, I made the video. But it's still nice to go back and look at the things I was focusing on and the things I wanted to improve about my life and and see how I succeeded or failed. <laughs> there we go. And I'll admit, I'm sure it's the same for everybody, but it has been a tough few years. The pandemic was bonkers. And the year after that was pretty bonkers. And then life's still not normal. Life isn't normal. Life's never going to be normal again. We should stop blaming the pandemic. I was in Stop and Shop the other day and a bloody robot was rolling around. A robot. And it was like scanning all the barcodes and stuff. And I'm like, I live in an age of robots. No man's ever done that before. It wasn't the pandemic that changed anything. It's the fact that we live in an era of robots. And there's Elon Musk is sent a, 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 a red convertible flying through space. We have electric cars. We have the, these phones that I'm recording this on. I'm recording this on my phone rather than my DSLR because, you know, it's, it's pretty much better quality. Um, it's a really amazing time to be alive. Just thinking that, it's a really amazing time to be alive. It's the best time in human history to ever be alive. It's funny. We're always complaining as a society about, you know, how marginalised people are. But I hate to say it, people are less marginalised right now than they ever have been in human history. And that's good. And long may it continue. Hopefully we are just going to get better as a society. And I think a lot of people think we're getting worse, but I don't necessarily think so. No, I'm excited to be alive. And I'm in that magical cusp between not being young anymore, but I'm not yet old. And I'm in fairly decent nick. And so it's good. I am very grateful for the opportunity to be on the planet Earth in the year 2023. Um, that's the thing about being my age. It's I remember things the way they used to be before everything changed. You know, when we have four television channels and you have to get up and across the room to change the television channel. And, um, you know, I when I had my first car, beautiful Triumph TR7, uh, beautiful orangey red car. And when I broke down, which happened a lot, as it has done with every single car I've ever owned, except the current locomotive, she's behaving. Anyway, when it used to break down, I used to have to walk to the nearest house and knock on the door and say, excuse me, can I use your phone to call the, uh, AA? And uh, yeah, lots of people didn't answer the door because I was a big oh, six foot bloke in a leather jacket. And they were like, what does he want? Um, and when I used to drive places, I used to have to map read. I love map reading. I used to have a wonderful time driving around, uh, following maps and stuff like that. My parents were really, really wonderfully indulgent. I had my, my Triumph TR7 and then I got to drive their, their Land Rover Defender a lot. And I had such bonkers adventures in that. Oh, I remember one time my mate Fraser and I, uh, we snuck off to Plymouth when my parents were in France and uh, we parked in the multi-story car park. And as I went in, it went ding because the Land Rover was too tall for the multi-story car park. And I was like, ah, it'll be fine. 
but it wasn't fine because we drove in and we found a parking spot we went out and did all the business in, in Plymouth and then we came back and as we drove out again the ceiling started to get narrower and narrower and narrower and then I was like oh when that thing went ding and said that this car was too tall this car was too tall but because it was a Land Rover my mate and I could go and get some wrenches and unwrench the 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 ladder and the the big rack on the top and take it down and then we were the right size to go through again can't do that with a modern car oh that was fun anyway so for me to go from that to now live in an age where you can self-publish books and be successful did i remind you that i sold six sixty eight thousand copies of my books um reached 320,000 readers on Kindle Unlimited. I mean, there was me at that age when I was driving around Plymouth and Land Rover and I was writing my stupid stories. And I wanted desperately to be a writer. And everyone's like, uh, it's so difficult to be a writer. Uh, it's so difficult to be a writer, you'll never make it. And then here I am, in your face, mate. Um, and the technology. I mean, I don't like the, the time sucking stuff of, of phones. It can be not necessarily a good thing, but aren't they amazing? I'm thinking um, of like social media. I'm thinking of all the friends I've made, like real friends who I value in the Bond community, who I never would have got chatting to if it wasn't for this stupid thing called Instagram. Um, making YouTube videos, isn't that amazing? No, I, I probably watch more YouTube videos than anything. And it's fun watching people I know make videos about stuff they like. Um, it's great. It's it's an amazing time to be alive and it's an amazing time to be my age and get to appreciate you know what was what was then and what is now and where is it all going i mean personally i think ai is going to change everything and it kind of terrifies me a bit it really is going to change everything like even in my in writing i'm a writer like it's ended 20 percent of what writers do it, overnight I mean, I found that I had to write a headline and a blurb for, for the Hidden Gems podcast and I got ChatGPT to do it and I had to change certain words, I had to polish it, but it like did it. And for me, that's the hardest step of, of doing the podcasts. It's like, you know, the agony of a blank page and then this just solves that problem. And I'm terrified that people are going to figure out a way to make it read 100,000 romance books. And then you just put in the character in the scenario and it just generates it for you. I mean, that's oddly terrifying. Because <laughs> I think with, I don't know, I think in not that long, it's going to reach the stage where it can do that. I saw a meme about how we all thought artificial intelligence was going to alleviate us from the mundanity of our, our jobs and stuff like that and allow us to spend our time making art and being creative but in reality what we're finding is people are generating art and being creative with artificial intelligence so we can focus on the mundanity of our day jobs <sighs> speaking of day jobs i mean that's it i'm now 45 years old and i look back at the previous year that's what i want to make the video about and i'll wrap it up instead of wrapping it on what was 44 like for me it was one of the best years of my life. It was one of the best years of my life. And anybody who knows me in real life might be really bloody surprised to hear me say that. Because I had some, some not great experiences and things didn't go according to plan in 2022. On multiple occasions. Like I really did take some hits. But the thing was, I took some hits that's fine and there wasn't any point in 2022 where I felt like I couldn't see it through that I couldn't just you know slog it out because that's what you do KBO as as St Winston said keep buggering on and my mother and I send emails to each other sometimes and we like finish it with KBO um KBO keep buggering on and you know I felt like whatever life could throw at me in 2022 I could handle and the reason it was one of the best years of my life is because life did throw some stuff at me and I handled it and I was really proud of myself because the previous year had been really really rough and I'm not gonna lie nearly lost it there for a minute 
it was it was rough and I felt really rough. And there was one point in particular, it was a turning point, where I was like, you know what, things could have gone south, but they didn't. Because because, you know, if I learnt anything from the saint, it's to keep a smile on your face and just keep going anyway because um you can you can sometimes perform miracles. That's what saints do, isn't it? And so yeah, 2021 was really, really hard. And 2022 was equally as hard, but I just took on the chin. It was an adventure, it was a roller coaster. And right now, as I sit here, I am in such a better place in my life. It is not even, you can't even fathom it. And it's the weird thing is, it's the same place, but I'm just a different person. Um, and yeah, I'm good, I'm excited, and I can start getting back on top of things. It was a rough few years, and I didn't necessarily uh, meet them with the, the grit that I wanted to, but it made it through, that's all you had to do. That's all you had to do with the pandemic, was make it through. And now I am in a such better place than I was. And I'm excited about what is going to happen to me this year. And I'm deeply appreciative of everything I have. And that's the, that's the thing you've got you to gotta be. You've got to be appreciative. I mean, I have, in some ways, a crazy idyllic life. I mean, I'm a writer. And obviously I do other stuff uh, in addition to writing. But I know, technically, I, I technically I don't technically I don't have a boss. I work from home. I, get, I don't need to go to an office. Um, I mean, that's it. I feel liberated from. I could never go back to corporate America. I don't think. I don't. Know, I might have to to erase this video if I ever decide to go back to corporate America. But I don't honestly think I could ever go back to corporate America. It's fucking lunacy it's lunacy and so I'm really enjoying my life at the moment because I have to do stuff to survive and I don't mind doing it in fact I quite enjoy doing it and what I'm doing I feel provides value and that's what it's all about and secondly I'm getting back in the gear to get my writing back in the game to where it was uh, before the before the pandemic where that's my job I just need to and I can do it because I did it before and you can do it again so 45 it's going to be a hopefully it's going to be a really good exciting year and things are going to go right and um, I'm really looking forward to it hopefully this Saturday uh, Tina and I are going to go and meet up with some Bond folks in uh, New York for a premiere of a documentary called The Other Fella and um you're seeing friends, doing stuff, it's, I don't know, it's good, life is good. You've got to take it one day at a time, and you've got to get up every single day and find something that makes you happy, something to smile about, something to be grateful for, because chances are, if you're watching this video, you're in some situation in your life that you have a lot more than uh, a lot of other people have, and you have a lot more than you would have done a few years ago. So, KBO, keep buggering on. Whereas my brother and I used to sign off our emails, keep the faith. Yeah, not in a religious sense, in a Bon Jovi sense. Keep the faith. But that's it. Uh, because life is going to get better. And we're on the right track. And that is what 44 to 45 meant to me. Anyway, I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Talking about something that's not just me rambling. And until then, cheers. I'm Roland Hume. I've sold 67,000 copies of my books. If you want to find out how I did it, I've got the link right here you can click. And otherwise, don't forget to subscribe. I've got more videos coming soon. Thank you.